Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to discuss AP Biology Topic 7.4, Population Genetics. Remember that one of the key ideas for this unit is the idea that all biological populations change in their genetic makeup or allele frequency over time. And we call this change over time evolution. So populations gradually evolve over a series of subsequent generations as natural selection and other mechanisms act upon their allele frequency. We define a population as a group of individuals that it can interbreed and produce viable offspring, which are known as species. When looking at a population, we see that they share a common gene pool or collection of genes that can be shared and passed on to new generations. And remember that each of these genes are determined by a combination of alleles and that the allele frequency of a gene pool refers to how frequently a particular allele appears in the population. It's important to understand that the major source of genetic variation within a population are mutations. These random changes within the genome of an organism can increase genetic variation by increasing the number of possible phenotypes produced from a set of alleles. This genetic variation is what is acted upon by natural selection, which we discussed in the previous topic. Today, we're going to look at some other mechanisms that can change the genetic variation within a population and lead to that population's evolution. It's important for a population of individuals to have high levels of genetic variation or high genetic diversity. This is because in an ever-changing environment, we want to provide every opportunity for adaptations to appear within that population. For example, if we have a population with high genetic diversity, that population has a higher probability of having some sort of adaptation or advantage in a changing environment. These may be caused by beneficial mutations that occur throughout the population. Natural selection will act upon these adaptations and lead more individuals with that particular mutation to survive in the changing environment. But if we compare this to a population that has lower genetic diversity, a changing environment has a smaller probability of having a beneficial mutation within that population. If we don't have a wide variety of different phenotypes, an environmental change could wipe out the entire population. And we see an example of this in our commercial agriculture industry. Long ago, when plants were wild, we had a wide variety in the genetic diversity of these different plant species. And as agriculture grew and we cultivated um, different plants to have the variations that we wanted them to have, we decrease the amount of genetic variation within the populations. This leads some species to be more susceptible to changes in the environment. Take, for example, the Gros Michel banana, which suffered from a virus and had to be replaced by a different variety of banana because all of the population of that particular type of banana were clones of each other. So they had absolutely zero genetic diversity, so there was no way to prevent infection from the virus. We spent the last topic discussing natural selection as a major mechanism of evolution, which is the change in allele frequency in a population over time. But Allele frequency can actually be affected by several other factors aside from natural selection. These can include additional processes like gene flow, genetic drift, and non-random mating, all of which can affect the genetic makeup and change the allele frequency of a population from one generation to the next. The simplest of these mechanisms is gene flow, or the movement of alleles in and out of a population. When you have a set population of organisms, they're not likely to stay in the same place. They may immigrate and emigrate to and from the population, 
And with them, because they contain alleles that were once a part of the gene pool, they take those alleles with them, affecting another population. If individuals enter into a population, they also bring their alleles with them, changing the allele frequencies of the given population as well. Another mechanism that can affect the allele frequency in a population over time is that of genetic drift. Unlike gene flow, genetic drift is completely random and will have larger effects if a population doesn't have a very high genetic diversity. Essentially, genetic drift is random changes in allele frequency from one generation to the next. And these changes can compound over time if it's a large enough change in the allele frequency. These genetic drifts may cause harmful alleles to increase in frequency. They could cause advantageous alleles to decrease in frequency. But what's important to remember is that all of the changes that occur here are random. Now we're going to discuss two types of genetic drift and some examples that you would want to know in order to exemplify them. Our first example of genetic drift is going to be the bottleneck effect. The bottleneck effect are environmental effects that cause only a small number of a population to survive. These can be catastrophic events like weather phenomena or even a mass extinction event. Look what happens to a population's allele frequency following a bottleneck event. We can see that our original population is approximately equal in terms of the number of red and yellow alleles here represented as beans in a proverbial bottle. A bottleneck effect or an environmental catastrophic event greatly reduces the size of the original population. And whatever population is left may have a very different allele frequency as compared to the original population. We can see here that our alleles are no longer equal in proportion. We have far more red alleles than we have yellow. And this can cause the population to develop more of those red alleles as time goes on. We see that bottleneck event pictured and reflected within our surviving population. An example of a bottleneck effect in real life is that of the prairie chicken in Texas. Prairie chickens had a very low genetic diversity and were nearly wiped out following a catastrophic event. Another example of genetic drift is that of the founder effect. The founder effect is what happens when a small portion of the population relocates to a separate area where they're no longer interacting with the original population. This can also cause changes in allele frequency, but these are a little less random of changes because the sample population has chosen to relocate to a smaller isolated location. This can also lead to changes in allele frequency, and we see that in some populations of humans that have separated off from the traditional population, and these can lead to things like polydactyly. Finally, the last mechanism that I want to talk about in terms of what can change the allele frequency in a population is non-random selection. So we can refer to this as sexual selection, where individuals of one sex mate preferentially with the opposite sex rather than at random. So they're choosing their mates. We can see these in the innate courtship rituals of some organisms, intraspecies competition for mates, and one of the most well-known examples of sexual selection is that of male peacocks with their elegant back feathers. In some cases, scientists are able to investigate sexual selection and its impact on a population. For example, they take, took willow birds who prefer to mate with males that have longer tails, and what they did was captured males, 
artificially lengthened or shortened their tails by either cutting or gluing on additional feathers and then went to count how many the male how many <laughs> how many eggs the male had been able to produce following their changes what they found was that the females preferred the longer tails, even the artificially lengthened tails, where the birds with those artificially much longer than normal tails actually produced more offspring. So this is one of our examples of sexual selection. The females are selecting males based on their preference in terms of their tail length. Now, this brings us to the end of our discussion of AP Biology Topic 7.4. We did hit a couple of additional points that show up in Topic 7.12 as well. And these are some things to keep in mind for, for some practice problems where you may need to identify what exactly is causing the change in allele frequency. Keep those ideas of allele frequency in mind, as in the next video, we'll be doing them, we'll be using them to complete some math problems using the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equations.